In 2013, Obama was praised for leading the solar charge when he added an array of solar panels to the White House roof, but he actually wasn't the first president to do so. He was the third. And the first did it over 40 years ago in 1979. For frame of reference, the Apple II, one of the first personal computers to see widespread success, was released in 1977, just two years prior and Microsoft Windows was still six years from being invented. The president in 1979 was Jimmy Carter. You knew that. And he gave a speech that somehow both waxed prophetic and yet still kind of sounds like it could have been given yesterday. In the year 2000, the solar water heater behind me, which is being dedicated today, will still be here, supplying cheap, efficient energy. A generation from now this solar heater can either be a curiosity, a museum piece, an example of a road not taken, or it can be just a small part of one of the greatest and most exciting adventures ever undertaken by the American people. Harnessing the power of the sun to enrich our lives as we move away from our crippling dependence on foreign oil. As president, I am determined that America will move toward the solar age with effectiveness and determination, with excitement, high spirits, and with confidence. It's a good speech, a hopeful one. And he was right. In the year 2000, the solar water heater will still be here. Oh no, not about that though. They got Reagan a few years later. The panels were removed while resurfacing the White House roof in 1986 and never reinstalled. George Charles Zago, the engineer who persuaded Carter to install the solar panels, reportedly claimed that Reagan's chief of staff, Donald T. Reagan, felt the equipment was just a joke and had it taken down. The White House didn't use solar again until the tenure of George W. Bush? Really? Okay, gonna put a pin in that. Carter opens his speech by mentioning the solar water heater behind him, and that is indeed what it was. The 32 panel array was a thermal solar water heater for providing hot water for the staff, kitchen, and laundry versus the electricity generating photovoltaic cells that we commonly use on the roofs of White Houses in the present day. The array cost $28,000 to install in 1979, which in the present day equates to... Holy shit, $116,000? God damn, inflation! Still though, for a government project, that is an absolute bargain. I mean, a single Javelin missile is $108,000, so... Installing the solar panels to heat some of the water for the White House was a largely symbolic gesture, but then so was tearing them down, I suppose. After being removed in 1986, the panels sat in storage for 10 years before being repurposed for use at the cafeteria of Maine Unity College, where they continued producing hot water until 2005. In the years since, the university has been slowly donating the panels to different organizations and museums, including the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., and the Solar Science and Technology Museum in Dezhou, China. So, Carter was right. They did end up as a museum piece. But also, unfortunately, as an example of a road not taken. Those panels lasted only seven years on the White House, and the solar boom of the last decade took 40 years to get to from Carter's ahead-of-its-time water heater. Carter put up solar panels, Reagan took them down, and the next president who fucks with solar is George W. Bush. Not what I expected. Evidently, the National Park Service oversaw the installation of three solar systems on the White House grounds in 2002. A system was installed for heating the pool and spa, and another for hot water. Additionally, a solar electric system was installed, providing 9 kilowatts of power for the maintenance building. It's not entirely clear how much of a part GW played in the installation of these systems, with some sources positing that it happened while he was out of town and he had no part in it. 
It certainly does seem incongruent with the seemingly oil-powered nature of the Bush presidency, but who knows? Either way, Bush is still the first president under whose tenure the White House had a solar electric system. In this very, very specific way, George W. Bush was a champion of the environment. Truly a legacy that nothing can tarnish. A more consequential and famous solar system was installed under the Obama administration and was completed in 2014. The new panels are six times more powerful than those installed by Carter in 1979 and were expected to pay for themselves after eight years, meaning they should have paid themselves off in 2022. Provided it was sunny enough over the last eight years, I guess. I couldn't find out how many Javelin missiles they cost to install, uh, but the system, which remains up today, provides 19,700 kilowatt hours of electricity per year, which is enough to power a small to medium home and likely account for a drop in the bucket of the White House's power usage. Neither Trump nor Biden have added to or removed the solar panels installed into the Obama administration, which I kind of find a little surprising on both counts. A little surprised Trump didn't remove them just because they were put up by Obama. Though I doubt he knew or cared about them. But I'm more surprised that Biden hasn't installed a few more solar panels. That kind of seems like a slam dunk for a slow news week. Maybe somebody should get on that. As the global solar industry continues to be one of the fastest growing, with a valuation north of $200 billion, it's worth considering that 40 years ago, this was largely a technological footnote that was mostly disregarded. The future of solar is a bright one, and it will definitely be interesting to see what future presidents do with solar technology. Do you think that government agencies should be investing more into solar, or do you think there are still too many logistical problems involved in doing so? Let me know in the comments. Play us out, Jimmy Carter. I think all of us working together can assure the success of what is being initiated this afternoon, a national program supported and enjoyed by all Americans to make solar energy a clean, sure, economical, exciting part of Americans' lives. Thank you very much.